Hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Today's presentation is called Interns Are Staff Too and it will be presented by Patricia Marsdale. I'm Nicole Gibby Munkia. I'm the program officer for continuing education for YALSA. And before we get started, I'd just like to give you a quick review of a few features of our webinar software. Um, during today's program, we'll be communicating with each other via chat. So at any time during the discussion, please feel free to submit your questions to Patricia using the chat box. That is located on the left-hand side of your screen. She will make every attempt to answer the questions as they come in or as they fit into the flow of the discussion. Now, if we run out of time to answer a specific question, please don't worry. We'll follow up with the group with an answer. If you would prefer to not see the chat box during the webinar, you may click on the full screen button, which is located on the upper right hand side of your screen, and that will eliminate the chat and attendee list boxes. To undo the full screen view, just click on the button again. Located at the top of your screen in the middle, you should see an image of a person with her hand raised. If you click on the arrow next to the image of the person, you'll see that you have a variety of options, which include raising your hand, laughing, applauding, agreeing, or disagreeing. If at any point you experience audio issues, please simply type a message to in the chat box, let me know, and I'll work with you to resolve them. Following today's presentation, you will receive a link to the webinar recording as well as the PowerPoint slides. If you would like to receive a certificate of participation, just send me a quick email following the webinar. I will post my email address in the chat box, and I'd be happy to send that certificate along to you. So now I'm going to turn it over to Patricia. Welcome, and thank you for presenting today's program. Thank you so much. Uh, happy Thursday, everybody. Also, happy uh, day after tax day. Congratulations. We've all made it through that hump. And in saying so, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. Super, super, super fantastic. Um, okay, well, welcome everybody to today's presentation, and thank you so much for attending today, and also congratulations on being 2015 YALSA Teen Intern and Dollar General uh, grantees. Uh, it's a really great, wonderful, and fabulous opportunity, so congratulations to all of you for all of your hard work so far. Okay, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I work at the Hussey Mayfield Memorial Public Library, which is located in Zionsville, Indiana. I can throw a rock and hit the Indianapolis area, so we're super close to, to that. Uh, feel free to call me at any point in time if there's anything I can do for you um, over the course of your internship or if you're getting ready or if you have any additional questions. Um, it's why I'm here. I'm really passionate about working with teens and uh, we have a great volunteer program program here and we also have a really great intern program here which I'll talk about shortly as well. You're also, you know, you can feel free to email me as well, but I always say, well, you know what, let's talk it over on the phone. Let's make sure that we get all of your questions answered. And sometimes there's just too much information to type, which I think we all understand from time to time. So feel free to contact me if there's anything you need and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, and here's a little bit about what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about making sure that the interns feel a part of your team or a part of your staff. We may say staff, but in general, what we mean is that you're part of a, a team. You know, most of us, I'm sure, all work in small libraries, and there isn't somebody in an office somewhere telling us what to do or saying, hey, you have all of these presenters lined up, you just need to have somebody in a room. Uh, you know, we're not part of that here at our library. I tell people, I'm like, I'm a department of one, I'm the only teen librarian, and I make all the magic happen. I have no idea how the magic happens when I'm not here, other than I just cross my fingers, give somebody the thumbs up, and and hope it does happen. Um, introducing interns to your staff, it doesn't sound really like it's a big deal, but it is something that uh, is really important to the process of making sure that your interns do feel as though they're a part of the team. Uh, I want to talk to you guys also about setting your interns up for success. Um, ultimately, when you do this, 
you are just helping them make you look good and ultimately this is what everybody wants the interns want to look good you want to look good for um, for your supervisor and you really want to just make sure that the intern program as a whole was a big success as well um, and then also the other thing is to show everybody the whole picture like there is a reason why we do this. Uh, I know it sounds silly, but sometimes I have intern sharpen pencils, volunteer sharpen pencils, and I'm like, you know, I, I know that this is not an exciting job. I would never have you do anything that I don't do myself. And I know it seems ridiculous to sharpen pencils, but nobody wants to write with a dull pencil. And a lot of times we have people who don't fill out surveys because of that. So um, talking about the importance of that a little bit more uh, is also part of what I want to talk to you guys about today. And ultimately, I want to tell you guys, this will be a lot of work, but you're going to get out of it what you put into it. And I know that you guys have already done a lot of work because there was already a lot of planning that went into it, um, a lot of writing and research for when you guys wrote your grants and now as you guys are all getting into the upswing of things uh, you're you're still putting even more work into it but again you're gonna get out of it what you put into it okay but first a little bit more about me um, this is a picture last year of summer reading I have not let my library take a good picture of me in the past couple years I'm actually kind of in the middle I'm wearing a red shirt and I've got the home alone face that I'm sporting. This is actually for our, our ice cream social. We were supposed to have it outside, but it started to sprinkle, so as a precaution, we brought it inside. And that's actually a little snack area that we really weren't supposed to have that many people in there. But we didn't know where else to put them, so we just put them in there. Everybody ate ice cream. They had a good time. So a little bit more about me. Oh, one second. Oh, there we go. Um, I've been a teen librarian at my current library for five and a half years. I am a 2012, 2013, and 2014 Yelsa Dollar General intern grant recipient. Um, in 2015, we actually got the program funded internally. I was super excited to see that. Um, our staff was 100% behind us on this, and uh, we were really lucky and very excited to see that uh, the upper management levels felt the same way about the program as what we did. Uh, now, prior to this, I just want to let everybody know I had zero supervisory experience. And being a supervisor is not something that you have automatically, but it's something that you just kind of learn as you go. And I'm still learning every time that I work with teens, so I'm not perfect. You guys won't be perfect. Don't expect to be awesome gung-ho co coming out of, the, out of the gates. But in time, you will uh, be a great supervisor. And if anything, it's a great opportunity for you to have this experience. So then if at any point in time you wanted to move up to a different library system or uh, to a different position, you can say, well, you know, yes, I do have supervisory experience. So it's a great opportunity for all of us in that aspect. Um, and then my challenges, I just wanted to go through a couple things. I also tell my interns this. Um, I'm not great at organizing my office. I tell kids it's like a black hole. Please don't put any anything in there I, I will never see it and if you ever want it back you're never going to see it again uh, time management I, I do what I can but I tend to chat a lot brevity is not my strong point nor has it ever been uh, teaching I'm not a teacher uh, I learned that it is an art it is an art that I've learned in time that I do not possess and delegating delegating is not also something that I am not very good at Okay, so now a little bit, I want to tell you about our program. We have volunteers and we have interns. Um, first of all, volunteers is anyone who is entering grades 7 and up. They have two hours of training and they work one two-hour shift per week and that actually says for eight weeks on there um, and their reward is a special event so we take the two hours of training which we consider uh, similar to a job orientation in our volunteer program we tell people that uh, job skills is the number one thing that we want to teach all of the teens coming in that we want to treat this as much like an actual paying job as what we can so they know what to expect um, so our two-hour training is our orientation and then two eight hour, or I'm sorry, eight two hour shifts over the course of the summer is a total of 18 hours. 
Um, we do work around camps, which brings me to my next little point, that the uh, volunteers, they can drop or pick up their shifts as needed. So if they have a camp, if they have an awesome vacation to go to, we say, please, we want you to go to that. But if you want to come to our special event, you're going to make sure that you need to pick up your shift at another time. Um, and we actually hold uh, all of the event information hostage. And we don't show anybody or tell anybody what it is until the uh, halfway point in the program. Um, only two people know, and those are the two people who work directly with the volunteers, myself and somebody else. Um, and, and again, we don't let any of that information go because we want people to not front load because if people are working uh, their two hour shift like every Monday from 10 to noon, if they front load and then they don't show up for the remaining of their shift, you know, that kind of puts us in a bad situation. And then at the same time, no job would ever let us do that. I'm sure that if I wanted to work 40 hours in the first four days and not show up on Friday, that I'd probably end up in somebody's office talking to them. So. Um, that's one of the other reasons why we do that. So that is our volunteer program, kind of a quick overview of it. Uh, now let me tell you about our interns. They must have been a member of Team Volunteer Corps, which is the official title. The first part of the training, what we do is we bring them in on uh, the Friday that school lets out, which also happens to be the Friday before our summer reading program starts. Uh, the library closes at 5. We bring them in from 4 to 8 p.m., which already they feel really cool because they're in the library and the library is closed and it's really awesome. And I would never, ever say this, but on occasion they say, can we run? And because there's nobody in the library, I would never tell them that, that they could. But they, they always ask. Um, the other part of that is what we do is after we give them their four hours training and tell them what we expect of them and all that good stuff, we bring them back a second day. And if you guys ever took a reference class where you had kind of like a scavenger hunt that you had to do, like somebody wants the name of the paper at in Sunnyside, Florida, and it has the name Sun in it, but they can't remember what is it and what's the contact information, we do something like that. I give them an envelope with all the scenarios that they can expect, and it is their job over those two hours to make sure that they figure everything out. You know, it, it helps make them feel comfortable and confident that they can do everything. It gives them a better understanding of everything that's being asked of them over the course of the uh, next eight weeks. And plus, it's kind of a reassurance. We do have an intern reference guide that we give to all of our interns that says in writing, this is what we expect of you. Um, you know, here's how you use the copier. I'm going to show you guys that a little bit later. Um, so we, we set them up for success and we say, well, you know what? Use this. And I always tell the interns and all of our volunteers, if I learn something, I'm going to go to sleep and I'm going to forget it the next day. So we don't expect you guys to remember this, and that's why we have all these great resources for you. Um, our interns, now that we've covered uh, a portion of the training, they work anywhere between one to two four-hour shifts per week for the course of the eight weeks. Uh, as a reward, they get uh, to attend the special event, and they also get $125 stipend for that. Um, and we tell them, we're not hiring you. It's not a job. It is just um, a, a compensation for your time. Um, the other thing about that is our interns are getting somewhere between 40, I'm sorry, uh, actually 50 to 60 hours, whereas our volunteers get right around 18, some more, some less, depending on the team themselves. Um, the most interesting fact um, about our teen volunteer, or, or I'm sorry, our teen intern program is that none of the interns know there's any money involved until they get their letter saying, congratulations, you're one of our intern. And I don't know if I've said it yet, but we actually hire eight interns. Uh, we've had six interns the first year eight interns the following two years, and we like how that's worked and how things have split up, so we've continued with the uh, number of eight interns. Um, they must attend all of their shifts or find a replacement if they can't, so if they are sick, they have all of the names and phone numbers of all the interns. They are responsible for calling and finding somebody that can either take their shift or trade them a shift somewhere else. 
And uh, their main responsibilities, amongst a number of other things, is to manage their peers. We give them permission to enter the staff area. Um, and they're the go-to person for everything teen SRP. So if somebody has a question, they ask a volunteer, the volunteer doesn't know, instead of coming to our staff, they go to the interns because they have all these um, extra trainings. And in addition to that, they've done this before, which is another reason why we ask that our interns have been a member of our volunteer program for one year. Okay, more about this program, and I may be repeating myself, and if I am, I apologize. Uh, we have 70 to 80 applications who come uh, that come in. Uh, the picture that you see here is actually from our um, orientation, which we call our orientation plus our customer service training. We feed them pizza because two hours is a long time to uh, to sit down and listen to people talk. They're squirrely. School got out the day before, and it's a Saturday. Some of their friends are already headed out of town. Uh, so what we do is it's just a small way that we can say thank you. And we have a very generous foundation and friends of the library who help support this program. And we're very thankful for that. Um, so now that we have all these applications, we make three piles. One pile for interns, one pile for our first floor, which is everybody in birth through fifth grades. And one pile for our second floor volunteers, which is um, those who want to work uh, with our teen program. Then uh, I work with somebody else. We create a schedule, and we input that schedule online using mysignup.com. We're very fond of that because that is exactly what the schools use to uh, sign everybody up so the kids are already familiar with it, which makes our job a lot easier. Now, what are all these kids doing? They register participants for summer reading. They pass out prizes. They shelf materials, assist with programs, which sometimes means running the vacuum cleaner. But you would be surprised at how many kids say, yeah, I want to run the vacuum cleaner. I don't know why, but it, it makes them happy just to know that they're helping out. Um, my kids on the second floor, they, they do inventory. I print a list of all of these 7,000 items in my collection, and we track every single one of them down over the course of the summer. And then we also work on special projects with our volunteers as well. Okay, I want to talk about our stats for 2014, just so again you guys can kind of get an idea of how our program works. Um, on our first floor, we had 43 volunteers with over 750 hours. In the second floor or team program, we had 26 volunteers with uh, 421 hours. We had 18 interns with that uh, worked a total of 413 and a half hours. Now this does include that. Uh, orientation that we talked to everybody about, orientation slash training. Um, so those numbers are slightly askew, but we would all get paid for our orientation and our training for work. So we just thought that it made sense that these kids should get credit for that as well. Because again, we do try to concentrate on on-the-job training. Now that gave us a total of 77 volunteers just over 1,600 hours. And then I want to say that we have a 20 to a 25% retention rate. Uh, that would be a lot higher, but we found that from time to time that we do lose kids uh, because they, they get real jobs and they go into high school and they're doing band and they're going and doing guard and all these other things. And we tell them where they're like, we're so excited for you and we're so happy for you. And they say, well, I really wish I had time to volunteer. And that makes us really happy. Uh, I also want to talk to you guys. Um, I'm going to take a little sidebar here and tell you a, a little personal story here. 2014 was not only a record-setting summer for us as far as our uh, volunteer stats. Uh, it was also a summer to remember for me. If you look uh, July 26th, that is our last day of summer reading. Uh, that's always a really exciting day for me. August 1st is when we have our end of summer celebration. It's like our one last bash. I hire a presenter to come in and do some stuff. We draw our three big prize winners for our teen summer reading program. And the very next day is when we have our uh, perfect attendance party for our teens. We uh, took them to Monster Mini Golf last year and we ate pizza and they really enjoyed that. And the facility actually opened um, two hours early just for us. So we had the entire place to ourselves. And August 6th is also circled because everybody at work knew that that was when um, my due date was to have my first baby. Uh, my husband and I, we were both late babies, and both of our mothers had to be induced, so I was sure that it was going to be middle of August uh, before uh, kiddo came. Uh, but actually, to everyone's surprise, I went into labor on Thursday, July 17th. 
and had my baby later that day. And I was actually at work when uh, the process started. So I, I was kind of nervous. I'm just like, you know, I, I hope everything goes okay. I, I told my supervisor. Um, I, I was like, I think all the interns are going to be okay. I, I think all of the volunteers are going to be okay. All you have to do is just talk to the interns, and I think that they can get you up to speed. And so I left just kind of giving her the thumbs up, like, good luck, you can do it. The kids are going to be awesome. They're going to help you out. And she just, she's trying to push me out the door because she's like, you know, you really need to get to the hospital. I think that should be your number one concern. Um, to this day, my boss has never had anything but good things to say about that week and a half or so that I missed. She said that the interns took great care of her, that they knew what to do. And they said, oh, well, you know, I, I can take care of it. A lot of times they didn't even show her the process. They just said, I'll take care of it. So that made me feel really good that my program is such a great success and I've worked so well with all the interns and trained them so well that my program can actually operate without me. And I asked my boss, I said, should I be nervous that it went so well? I was like, you do still need me, right? And she said, don't worry. Yes, we still need you. So that made me feel really good for a number of reasons. Okay, so let's talk about where everybody is already at now. Uh, we're going to use the chat box off to the side. Uh, I want to know what is everybody going to have their interns do for them. So if you can go ahead and type that in, that would be great. Actually, it would be awesome. I can't wait to see what everybody's interns are going to be doing. Helping staff with programming. That's awesome. Uh, story hours, arts and crafts, shelving, and more. Great. Uh, prep and run children's summer reading programs and help promote team programming. Register participants, hand out prizes, help out at programs, uh, oversee summer reading volunteers. You know what? I'm, I'm super excited for everybody so far because it sounds like what your interns will be doing for you is what our interns have done for us over the past. So I think that you guys are really, really going to get a lot out of this. Um, and in saying that, please have my information handy. Call me, email me, it's what we do. Um, explore Memphis program and expanded summer reading learning experience. Oh, Beverly, I would love to hear a little bit more about that because I that kind of sounds totally unfamiliar with me. Um, Let's see, planning children's program from start to finish, which is huge. That's going to be great job experience for them. Uh, marketing push, especially with our new Instagram, that, that is no easy feat. So it sounds like that you guys um, all have really great plans for your interns, which is awesome. Um, now, in saying this, one of the things that I recommend is having a detailed list. Which brings me to my next point. Let your staff know what your interns can do. Can they make copies? Can they go to the sex to retrieve an item for somebody? Um, can they sharpen pencils, which I know sounds stupid, but we talked about the importance of having sharp pencils earlier. Can they push in chairs? Can they type up reports? Can they count SRP stats? Uh, some of our kids when I tell them like every Saturday we're going to count how many prizes are left and they're just like really and I say yeah I know it doesn't sound important but the reason why we do this is so we can check to see when it is that these kids are coming retrieving these prizes like at what point are they coming and getting their 5,000 page prize do they get it at the halfway point or are they getting it closer to week three or week seven so that way if we ever run out that it kind of lets us know where we are along the way um, and then it also checks to make sure that um, hopefully that shrinkage is not happening but on occasion that it does um, and then it just I, again kind of an overall this is what we do plus when they start working in other jobs that will most likely inventory will be part of what they do so it's good to kind of get them started and realize that you know it may be a small thing but it definitely and absolutely is part of bigger picture okay activity time I don't know if you guys saw it I hope you all have your cell phones handy because we're going to take pictures and actually, I'm, okay, I thought maybe I was jumping ahead of myself on my notes. Okay, so use your cell phone to take a picture of yourself. Don't smile. Wear your serious face. Go ahead and give you guys a second or two to do that. Uh, if you don't have 
um, a, a picture cell phone, it's just fine. Uh, but I'd much rather you guys do that if you could. Okay, we're going to take a total of four pictures. I don't know if I said that. Uh, take another picture and have a closed mouth smile. We're not going to show any teeth, but just have a nice little closed mouth smile that we're putting on. And take another one. Show your teeth this time. And that is really awesome, that Explore Memphis. That's very cool. Okay, so now um, I want everybody to rest a little bit before we take our final picture. Um, massage your face a little bit. I know it sounds silly. And this is what you'll sound like if you talk. But just massage your face a little bit. You want to get kind of all the smiles out. And now smile with your teeth. And now make your smile bigger. Kind of annoyingly big. And take your last photo. Okay, so hopefully everybody did that. Um, show and tell! Don't worry, I'm the only one showing. I have no problem embarrassing myself. It's part of why the kids uh, are so amused by me. But I always say that I have no problem being wrong. Um, th this is my picture. This is my, you know, my serious face. This is probably what some people see when, when I'm working because I'm concentrating. I'm lo looking at something and then I look back at them. So this is probably not the supervisor that you want to talk to. This is my second smile. This is my closed mouth smile. Um, I'd much rather talk to number two than number one. Smile number three. This is what I refer to kind of as your uh, photographic or photogenic smile. When somebody tells you to smile, this is a smile that they get. And this is smile number four. There isn't a big difference between numbers three and four, uh, but a lot of times when I tell people to smile and then smile bigger, that bigger smile is actually more of their natural smile. That's a smile that you're going to that you going to see on people's faces when they're truly happy. If you've ever had those days where you're just, your face hurts from smiling so much, that's because you've been flashing everybody at number four all day. So as you kind of move along through the intern process, remember that these kids, this is most likely their, their for, first job or their first big responsibility. And if you're flashing them a number one smile from time to time, which again isn't even a smile, you, you can actually be pretty intimidating. Okay, welcoming begins at the interview. Smile, everybody. This is not the face that you want to give everybody. This is my kid. I thought I'd toss a couple uh, photos in there. Um, just because this is a really interesting experience for me because I'm just like, hey, I'm awesome. I'm giving this webinar, but I feel like I'm not talking to anybody since I can't see anybody. So just wanting to make sure everybody's awake. Please don't flash this face to any of the kids. Um, smile during the interview. It doesn't have to be a four but a two will do. It kind of helps show them that, that you're paying attention to them, that they're doing a good job. It's a small little thing you can do to reassure people. Um, interviews, they're nerve-wracking. They're scary. I don't know when's the last time any of you guys went through an interview, but even, I think, some of the best people at interviews, it's still uh, a, a scary process, and especially if this is your first one and you don't know any of the questions to expect, uh, it, it can be scary. So just keep that in mind. Uh, take a picture of the intern after the interview. Don't wait until their first day, and don't do it before the interview. After the interview, they're probably going to feel a little bit more comfortable because they're like, okay, it's done. Now I just have to smile for this picture. Then we'll talk about that uh, in a minute. We asked them, one second, sorry. We asked them a series of 13 questions. The first question that we asked is kind of like a question to loosen them up a little bit. Tell us about yourself. What are you passionate about? What activities do you enjoy doing? One of the great things that we get from this question is uh, we learn like maybe things that the kids and I have in common. Like one kid uh, does duct tape crafts and he's very particular about the crafts. I asked him to bring some in sometime and they were really awesome and he's like well you know and the important thing is that in this uh, duct tape splatter or the splatter duct tape that I wanted all the splatter to line up. And that's probably more effort than what I've ever taken on doing any sort of duct tape project to make sure that the pattern lined up but that showed us later that he had a real attention to detail and it's like okay we definitely have some projects that this particular intern would be more more fitting for. 
Um, another one, we asked her what activities she enjoys doing. This, this poor girl, I don't know what possesses a 14-year-old to be able to ask her mom at the age of 10, Mom, can I organize your clothes closet? Because she just loved organizing. She really, really liked it so much, and she actually did such a great job. Her mom has kept up that organization for years. And I even told her, I said, well, you know that there are people who are called personal organizers, and that's what they do for a living? You would have not believed the smile on her face. It was it was a four plus. So uh, I always recommend that this is a great question uh, to ask. Toss it in whenever you want. Uh, the final question that we ask all the kids, which is number 13, if you could do anything in the library, any job, what would you do? This one is really interesting because we kind of get a job of what it is that the kids would want to do inside the library. Some of them say, well, you know, I, I, I really like doing artistic stuff. I, I'd love to work on some, some displays for you. Or another kid said, well, one of the things that I'd like to do is I'd like to clean the DVDs as they come in because sometimes I check them out and I notice that they're scratched. And sometimes I, I don't know what possesses certain people to enjoy certain aspects in life, but I'm just like, you know what? I would never, ever, ever want to clean DVDs as a job, but I'm certainly glad that somebody does. And then in this case, it would be something that we could give him to do, and he would be completely and utterly happy doing it. Okay, next thing, after you've done your interview, you want to make sure that your interns meet the staff. Does anybody have any questions so far? Must be a no. We'll hold that thought while I take a break. I needed to get a drink of water here. Uh, what other interview questions are helpful to ask? One second, let me get my notes. One of the things, I'll go over a couple of these, but I will um, email uh, very awesome Nicole the questions that we ask all of our interns. And you guys feel free to use that exactly or to um, use some of them. Uh, we want to know about the kids' previous teen volunteer core experience, which is our volunteer program here. Um, tell us about your experience last year. Do they recall anything that volunteers or participants found difficult or confusing? Do they have any suggestions on how to make things easier? Um, we have drawing tickets that we give out to kids, so we ask them what do we do with the drawing tickets? What do you do when there's nobody to help? How are you going to busy yourself? Uh, tell, us to, tell us about a time where you were being asked to do many different tasks at one time and how did you handle that particular situation? Um, and, and then there's more, like I said, I will email those to Nicole. Um, I actually do the interviews with my immediate supervisor. Uh, I really do like that. At first I thought it was kind of silly, but then I said, you know what, I think that's a really good idea uh, because I think it's important to be able to have somebody that's a little less familiar with all the kids. I, I know so many of these kids so well. I know what sports they're in. I know what activities they do outside of school. I know the vacations that they're going on. Um, so for us, it was me and my supervisor. And part of that also is that I'm, I'm on the younger side of being in the workforce. So one of the things that I wanted to do is have somebody in who maybe had a little bit more uh, thought process in as far as, you know, well, you've never been in a supervisory position. Let me sit in on, the, on these. We'll, we'll talk about the interview. And we bounce back on the questions. I asked the first. She asked the second. Um, and then afterwards, we had five minutes in between the interviews. We scheduled them, like, at four. 4.20, 4.45, and so on. Interviews would take about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then that gave us a little bit of downtime to immediately talk and say, okay, well, you know, what do you think? What issues do you think we'll have? Um, so we, we did them dual for that particular reason. Okay, so at this point in time, interview's done, and we want the interns to meet the staff. Remember how I said that we've taken their picture? Hopefully it is a more relaxed picture. I've had one particular uh, intern who has interned the past three years and even last year when he left his interview, I mean there was just this huge exhale of breath and I'm just like, that kid is so funny. We ask the same questions every year and then in addition to asking the same interview questions every year, he's actually taught some of my summer reading programs for me. And 
I, I was really surprised. I'm like, I don't know why he's nervous, but, but he is. So again, we have all those pictures. Send them out to your staff. Send an email, say, you know, please welcome these eight people. You may not recognize the names, but you'll know the faces. Um, you can find them outside my office. You can find them at the staff entrance. Um, if you guys maybe are part of a library system that has different reference desks, have one at the reference desk where the teens will most likely be the closest to. Um, we took the pictures of the interns. We want to do the same thing for the staff, you know, at least those that they'll be working closely with. We have approximately 50 uh, staff members at our library, but in our department, our teen and adult departments, we have eight people, including myself. Um, that and all of our interns, they're, they're really nervous. If you guys remember back to your first job, it's like, oh, you know, it's, I, I'm nervous, I'm scared, I don't want to screw up. Well, one of the things that can kind of help bridge that gap is being able to make a connection with everybody here. And this is uh, one of the resources that we had in our uh, quick reference binder for our interns. This is pictures, uh, everybody's name, and their jobs within our department. Um, and in saying this, I will say, make sure that you have current pictures. Tell people it doesn't have to be a nice picture. Give them a heads up now. Hey, within the next month or so, I need to take your picture. This is what it's for. Uh, and, and the other thing is, if your kids are helping out with programs, maybe they're not going to be at the library every day. They're going to go to sleep and forget everything. And I say that because I tell people, I go to sleep and I've forgotten everything we did today. And I even remember starting here how difficult it was for me to remember everybody's questions or, or not questions but names and faces so have something like this for your interns it will make them feel more comfortable approaching everybody else and becoming a more fluid part of the team of staff that you have um, introduce your staff to your interns or actually your interns to your staff whenever possible again it's a first job we're all really intimidating, but it gives us the opportunity to continue to put the name with the face, the name with the face. I mean, it's it's like a, a, a live flashcard scenario and situation where we're always constantly telling people, hey, you know, uh, intern Patricia, this is Jane, she's the department head, this is my supervisor, you can come to her whenever you need to. And then, you know, if a small conversation comes up from that, that is super awesome, fantastic, and that's something that we wouldn't have gotten had we not done that. But even, again, worst case scenario, you spend a couple seconds and you help reinforce the fact of this is the name, this is the face. Makes life a little bit easier. Okay, and training agenda. A couple things here. Intern introduction. If you have more than one intern, have them all go around, say their name, what school they go to. We have uh, two middle schools and a high school here. They, they all came from different schools or maybe the schools are so large the kids never cross paths. Um, names, faces, maybe say something about themselves like uh, we have the one kid who loves Star Trek and actually at one point in time he wore uh, one of the uh, little Star Trek shirts that has the, the communicator and every time I saw him and he wore that shirt I, I made him push the button. It wasn't a button, it was just like like a little iron-on logo, but, but I made him do it every time. And it made me laugh, and, and it made him laugh. Uh, so yeah, have the kids say something about themselves. It's going to take an extra 30 seconds. Trust me, it's going to be worth it, because you want these interns to not only communicate with you, but to communicate between each other as well. We want to get them to be comfortable. Give them the tour, not a tour. The tour. It is the ultimate tour of your library. Uh, lots of you guys have staff areas. We have a back area for our teen and adult um, office where all eight of our desks and office are located. But we also have a third floor that is for administration only. Uh, it is under lock and key, so it's not something that anybody goes at. Uh, the library is closed, and I'm like, well, let's go to the third floor. Let me show you guys what happens there that maybe you don't realize happens. Like, that's where our art department is. Our art department is one person who works 24 hours a week and does all of the publicity for our library. Everything that goes out. Um, we generally do not do the collaborative summer reading library program, so she creates all of the summer reading handouts that go out. Uh, so the one person does a lot of work, and we show them where all the office areas are. And there was even one hallway. They're like, what's, what's that door? Where, where does that go? And I said, oh, we'll get to that in a minute. 
Uh, and then later, I went down the stairs one way, and I sent them. I said, well, do you guys remember that door that we talked about earlier that you asked where, where it went to? And they're like, yeah. I said, why don't you go down that door? Well, where does it come out? I said, well, why don't you just go through the door and, and find out? I have faith in you. So they did that, and they, they were really excited. Um, one of the other things, tell them what you do. Leave no stone unturned. They're going to see what you do. And at some point in time, they may be able to see a way that they can assist or who knows, even make your job easier. Sometimes I've been doing our summer reading program here for years, and one of our staff members said, hey, Patricia, sometimes we have kids who need 30 drawing tickets at one time. Can you staple some together? And it took all I had to not take my head and just bang it against my desk because I was like, I can't believe I've never thought about that. I've been doing this job for years, and I've never thought about it, never occurred to me. So you never know when somebody may be able to provide the suggestion of the of a lifetime, essentially, for you. Make sure you let them know on the goal. Is it the number of pages to read, a number of hours, a number of books, the number of registrants? This is a part of every job, uh, technically or not technically, but most likely at their first job, it's going to be a certain number of sales. Kind of like when you go to McDonald's, they say, do you want fries with that? Well, a lot of people say yes, and what that does is that increase, it, it increases their sales, and in addition to increasing their sales, what it also does is um, it helps upsell that fry count. So maybe they have a goal of tacking on um, 100 extra sales per day by asking, do you want fries with that? So just make them aware that um, there is a goal, tell them what it is, and let them be a part of it and update them throughout the summer to let them know how they're doing on their goal or how not not they're doing how the library as a whole is doing on that goal okay and the last thing is reassure them always tell them or at least I do you know you guys are doing great you wouldn't be here if we didn't think that you could do everything that we're asking of you I always tell them I will not let you fail I will let you tread water but I will never let you drown um, in saying that, this is one of the things in our uh, intern quick reference binder. Um, it's how to use the photocopier. This is something that I made. It has really detailed directions. We go through and we show them how to use the photocopier. But again, this is a four-hour training session. When I first learned how to use the photocopier, I totally didn't remember the second time I had to use it. Even though somebody walked me through it the first time, totally didn't remember. So again, this is not only a part of reassurance, but a part of, you know, we want to set you up for success. And this is just one of the things that I've done. It, it took a while to get it done, but then after it was done, I've used it for years to come. And it's just been a really nice uh, thing to have. So I, again, set them up for success, reassure them that they can do it. And even by having this, I tell the kids, I'm like, it's here because I don't expect you to remember how to use it, but should you need to use the photocopier, this is how you do it, and this is your backup to help you. And a lot of kids, they even say on that second day of training, yeah, I used my binder, I went back through things, which is great. Okay, so here we are letting the fun begin. This is a picture of our reference desk. Um, what the kids do is they come in and they sign in behind the reference desk, and number one, when you sign in, turn to the person at the desk and you say, hello, I'm intern Patricia, and I'm here for my shift today. Uh, this serves a number of things because the particular setup that we have here, the intern could come in, sign in, and then go to the desk, which is uh, in the background, um, just in front of the Coke machine that you guys see in the picture. But they could do that, and we would never know it. And then we turn around and we're like, is that the intern, or is that the volunteer? We're really not sure. Um, also, what this does is it lets the staff member not only know that that person is here, but it also um, opens that gap for reintroduction. You know, the the uh, reference staff worker is going to turn around and say, oh, you know, hey, that sounds great. Thanks so much for letting me know. I'm Ordy if you have any questions. So even there, because the kids will most likely feel comfortable talking to you, we want them to feel comfortable wor working and talking to everybody. And so this is just another opportunity to create more interaction and to uh, give introductions. And again, interact with them. Um, even though our interns work four-hour shifts, and we have two per day, so we have one from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., and another from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Every two hours, we have volunteers. So every summer for the past four or five years, I come out of my office, 
and I make a point to chat with the volunteers slash interns. You know, how are you guys doing? Remind me of your names again. I'm so sorry I, I didn't get your names. How is your shift going today? Do you have any questions? You know, it, it lets them know also that they can come to me if they have any questions. I'm not, you know, just some mysterious floating mystery that's somewhere around. You know, I, I'm here. You let me know if you need anything. Um, and then have your communicate, or I'm sorry, have your intern communicate with you and your staff. Tell them, have them tell you what they did today and what tasks they did uh, before they leave. Um, and this is important because interns, at least mine, they are sneaky ninjas. Uh, I had a couple of them take pictures of what our teen area looked like. Um, and this is almost, a matter of fact, darn near every day, this is what it, we could expect of our teen area. Until one day I went out during the middle of the day, and it looked more like this. I'm just like, oh my gosh, our teen area is so messy. And then that's when the interns told me, they're like, yeah, us and the volunteers, we go through every couple hours and we straighten the shelves, we put the chess set back, we make sure that the checker set is ready to go, we put the books on display, we make sure the chairs are pushed in. And they even say sometimes we go outside the teen area and we go to the adult area and we push in chairs. And I felt so bad because I had no idea that they were doing this. And it may not seem like a big deal, but when you go to the grocery store, you never think about how nice the aisles look when everything is front-faced and pushed to the front of the shelf. The only thing you really notice is when it's not done. So that's why, in my opinion, it's important to make sure that you have that open communication um, and just kind of have everybody recap what, what they did today, what they did during their shift. Okay, we're going to have an activity because I want to check to make sure everybody is awake. Um, I want everybody to name one part of their job that's easy to do but is time consuming. Some great things, yeah, shelving books, shifting, flyers, count, program calendar updated for staff. Yeah, that's all important, easy, time consuming, weeding, absolutely, helping people, simple computer questions. Okay, great. Now, do me a favor, name another. And I'm going to speed things up here. Name a third. Oh, putting supplies away. I hate, I hate putting supplies away. It takes so much time. It drives me crazy. I have no idea how long it takes to put supplies away other than it does. So absolutely, displays, filling displays, reader's advisory, um, Tumblr page, that, that is one of my uh, things that I'm not good at. We have a Facebook page and having it updated is difficult for me to remember. Oh, cleaning up after hope programs. So not a fan of that. Yeah, Facebook. Yeah. All that stuff. Okay, well, that sounds great. Um, I just posted a picture that I have here. Um, this is one of the displays that I've done. This was packed to the gills. It's probably the most successful display that I've ever done because I've had to refill it several times as well as um, some of our staff members and volunteers during the school year have had to refill it as well. So even though... Um, all of my displays are taken up in the summer with summer reading related items. Stuff like this, my interns can do some brainstorming. They can uh, figure out what my displays will be, like the theme, what they will say, what they'll look like. They can actually do everything, like get all the pieces together and say, hey, I have it laid out, what do you think? And then I can take a picture and say, hey, it looks great. I'm going to save this for, you know, a couple months down the road. Okay, kryptonite. Everybody's not good at something. I said it before, and I'll say it again, and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit today um, about delegation. Um, I actually try to learn something new every year and improve our intern and our volunteer program, and delegation is uh, one of those areas that I wanted to read up on myself. Um, it's something that you have to learn. It's not something that um, you're born with. You, you have to learn to do it, and you have to work hard at it. Um, and it is hard to let go of tasks because while I 
while displays take a really long time to do, I actually kind of like them. I just wish that it didn't take two hours to do it, and I wish to fill it that it didn't take 45 minutes to pull books. I don't know why it does, but it, it does. Um, but one of the reasons that you need to have other people, or that you need to delegate, is it helps other people improve their skills. Um, it's also going to show those other people that you trust them and you want them to be successful because every time that you have them do something different, you're adding to their resume that they have. Uh, it also creates a greater company involvement because, it, again, every time you do that, you're helping show these your interns, hey, you're part of the team, you are part of how the magic happens here. It frees up your time. Man, if you don't have to put up a display or if you don't have to pull books for it or if they can create a list for it, that just saves you a lot of time. Even if it's something that takes the interns an hour to do, where it would have taken you 30 minutes, they just freed up 30 minutes of your time. And I think that's something that we all need in our day is more time not only to do our jobs but to enjoy life in general. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind is delegation is inevitable. You're going to have to do it, so you might as well start somewhere. A um, couple tips I have on that is to be specific. Again, this is where I'm, I remind my uh, interns that I am not a teacher. It is an art. It is an art that I do not possess. So I always tell them if I give you directions and it turns out that um, something was not done correctly, I always tell them, I said, that's my fault. I was not specific. I was not clear. I did not give you good directions. Um, and nine times out of 10, or maybe 19 times out of 20, that's exactly what it was, is I just, I gave the intern or the volunteer poor directions. And, you know, we can't fault them for that. Uh, learn to let go of some of these things that you like and accept the work of others. Um, I actually used to do all my weeding myself. Uh, but then one of the things that I did is I started having volunteers take all the books off the shelf and flip through them. They would look for damage, so then that was one less thing I had to do 7,000 times. Uh, we have one of our adult volunteers use one of our um, uh, staff computers, and they go in and they check to see when's the last time a book went out. So then I have this nice stack, hey, these books haven't gone out in the past two years. So I'm like, okay, those are the only books that I have to deal with are the ones that haven't gone out um, during that two-year period. Um, so, you know, they might be able to help alleviate some of that weeding process for me. Now, some of those books, because it's part of a series or for other reasons, uh, I don't get rid of them. They go back on the shelf, but it gives me a much smaller pool of things to deal with. Okay, we've talked a little bit about delegation. I want to show you guys how some, how delegation has really helped me out. I was really leery of doing it the first year. I really didn't feel good enough doing it the second year. But then after how things went and uh, the circumstances of me expecting um, at some point in time during the summer, I knew that I needed to do more of it. Uh, so we delegated some things to kids. Uh, this is our sophomore honors English summer reading assignment. The kids have to have read a book from a list. Um, they have to have some research done. I think they have to have like a two-page rough draft paper that later will be a ten-page research paper. I think everybody knows what happens. The kids come in two weeks beforehand and they say, I need the summer reading sophomore English honors reading list. And for years, I didn't have it. I couldn't get it. I struggled. I don't know why it was so hard, but I finally laid my hands on it. Um, and then after doing that, I said, this is a crazy list. You guys can see um, on the left-hand side here all those pages that are fanned out. And look how tiny that type is. So the kids who did have this list, they'd say, do you have any of these books? I'm like, are you kidding me? It, are there, is there one or two that you would like for me to look up for you? Because I, I, I'd be happy to show you how to use the catalog to look these up for yourself. Mm, no, that's okay. And the worst thing about the list that you guys can't even see, it's, it's organized alphabetical by title. And then as we go on later, I find out that uh, the directions on there are no longer correct. It's still the list that they pass out, but the directions on there are no longer correct. So uh, it, it was, you know, I, I wasn't playing with an entire baseball team. And I'm like, well, this is kind of unfair. Two of my interns actually had done this project. They knew the rules. They updated me. What they did was they, they communicated with each other. They uh, looked up each item in our catalog. 
uh, they put they organize by title, author, call number, and if there was a description in the catalog, they would put that in there as well. Um, and then they organize our list alphabetical by author's last name, which is what we like. So it was super to have that, and our staff were just so ecstatic about it, and I sent it to the um, teachers at the high school that deal with this, and they're like, oh my gosh, this is so great, thank you so much. Um, and then just a heads up, this is a 22-page document, so it, it was not a small task by any means. Um, another thing was this says uh, how to draw the weekly prize winners and to make a sign with their names. It doesn't seem like a big deal, but this is always one of those things where um, the previous summer, we open at 9.30, I would come in at 9 or 8.30, and at noon, the kids are still telling me, do you know who last week's prize winners are yet? And I'm like, oh, no, I haven't had time. I'm trying to get all these other things done. So I said, well, why can't I have one of my interns do that? So I showed one intern how to do it, and he actually took pictures and created detailed instructions that went along with everything. So this is one thing that I don't have to do next year, and this is one thing that thanks to uh, delegation and this great report uh, that my supervisor did not have to do while I was gone. So she certainly appreciated it as well. Uh, this one, how to run a report for the top 10 or top 15 readers. Uh, this one is interesting because his list actually looked better than mine. I'm like, that's so nice. I'm like, that's much prettier than anything that I would have come up with. I was so focused on just getting the job done, I couldn't kind of see the bigger picture about making it look a little bit better. So I really liked what this particular intern did um, in this case. Um, and this one, the inventory binder. Uh, I think I said that I have my interns take inventory and all my volunteers. We print a list of everything in our teen area and we account for it. It's on the shelf or it's checked out. If it's checked out, when is it coming back? Um, had I not done this, I never would have realized that one of my Hunger Games books, and this was a couple years ago uh, before the movie came out, was due in like 2012, and I'm like, it's not coming back. It's never coming back. So in that case, it said, hey, you need to go ahead and purchase a new one. It lets me know when our catalog is incorrect. I can talk to the appropriate people, and I can certainly get the um, catalog to reflect what actually is here. Um, a few other notes that I wanted to share with everybody. We do a group exit interview. We could do it one-on-one -on -one with the kids, but they've already been in an interview once. They've never heard of an exit interview. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to expect. We tell them what to expect, but we, we get them all together and we say, hey, this is what's going on. You can expect this at all your jobs. And we just talk about their experience. You know, what, was it what you expected? Was there anything that you were asked that you didn't know how to do? Um, it turned out at one point in time, especially our, our first year, we were starving our interns. They were working their 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. shift especially, and they were hungry, but they didn't feel comfortable enough going to anybody and, and saying, hey, I'm just going to grab a quick bite to eat. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, you guys should have said something. If you're hungry, please let us know. Um, and then we also have pictures and handouts ready for reminders, like, uh, here's a picture of what the teen prize desk look like. Is there anything that you guys can recommend for flow? And some of them said, yeah, there's too much stuff on here. You know, can, can you get rid of some of this? They, they didn't tell us during the process, but they could tell us after. And if anything, if they tell us after, we can know that those are issues that need to be improved for the next year. And the kids are actually ecstatic when we did make those improvements. Um, another one is to have them work on a daily journal or what I call a shift summary. This is something that we're going to use for the first time this year. Um, we want the interns to learn how to lead their peers, so I included the volunteer in the first part of my shift by, and we want them to fill that out. Um, I was able to delegate a task to somebody without jumping in because a lot of times I would give a task to an intern, make sure they understood it, and say, well, don't forget to include the volunteer in this. And their way of including the volunteer was having them cover the desk, and they would go somewhere else and work on a project. I'm like, well, that doesn't really make them feel uh, part of the process. But again, that was um, me maybe not being clear or working with them to be able to find better suggestions, like when you do this, what's one thing that you could include the volunteer in this? And for one particular task, 
the kid really liked it and he just didn't want to share it. He wanted to do it all himself. And I'm like, well, you have to remember that this is one of your jobs. It is one of the things that we're asking um, you for. Um, and one of the other things that we do is we have the kids keep a list of every little thing that they do. And they actually uh, say that at the end of the year during the exit interview, I say, bring that with you. I make a photocopy of it. We actually go through and it's kind of like categories. Somebody reads their list. And somebody say, oh my gosh, I did that too, but I forgot to write it down. So we have a list of everything that everybody's done. I photocopy all that, all those lists for my records because I want to be able to be able to take them to staff to say, well, these are what the interns did for us. Because chances are you guys are knowing what the interns are doing. Your immediate staff knows what the interns are doing. But when it comes to the bigger picture, such as administration, they may have no idea. But you have a list from the kids everything that they did and then you give them their copy and you say this is for your records put it in a file keep it for when you make your resume um, and then ask staff I always say if you see something say something it's a phrase that's not new to anybody but it lets them know if you see an intern doing a great job let me know I put it in a file I save it if an intern did um, something that you just thought was above and beyond email me let me know. I will save it. I will take it to administration um, and to my supervisor and I use it for fuel to be able to say this is why we need these interns. This is what they're doing. They're not just you know, kids. They're a great part of our team and they help make the magic happen and we truly couldn't do it without them. A couple things that I wanted to say about my exit interview results. Uh, the interns said that they knew what was expected of them which was important because from the get-go they knew what their job was they knew how to do it. In addition to that, uh, we all found out they wanted more tasks. They were so quick at getting things done and then we didn't have anything for them to do. So if you have a plan, have a plan B. Sometimes even a plan C. They said that they were at the library a lot. And that, that was pretty much the end of that. They're like, yeah, we were, we were at the library a lot. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but, but you did great. They all said that they would intern the next year or volunteer if an intern program did not exist. Um, and even though they said that they were at the library a lot, that they learned a lot. Uh, one intern, he did such a great job. He caught the eye of one of our first floor staff members who in charge of shelvers. And he's been working at the library ever since, and he's one of our best shelvers. Um, another intern used his experience here, um, and he used it to get a job at Meyer, which is kind of like a, a Walmart that has food in it. So we really have done great things with our interns, and they've gone to such great, wonderful places. Um, and the other thing, they would all do it for free. You know, they, they thought it was great that there was money involved. Again, we never told anybody that there was money involved because I had originally spoke with my supervisor and said, you know what, if this program is going to exist, it needs to exist and be here because the kids who are doing it love it. And so that was a decision that we had made early on is that we were going to hold that hostage. And every year we tell the kids, you know, please don't tell anybody that there's money involved and, and this is why. And they all agree that that's the best way to go, that the kids who are there are there because they want to be and because they love the library. And I know I'm talking a lot. I'm almost done. I want to talk to you guys about some resources. Uh, Delegation Skills by Bruce Tepper. This book is like 75 pages or so, and the font's really big, so you can plow through it kind of quickly. Um, something else to be familiar with. Be Our Guest, Perfecting the Art of Customer Service. This is by the Disney Institute. I use this as part of our two-hour orientation for all of our Teen Volunteer Corps members. As a bonus, a lot of the kids are familiar with Disney because they've been, so they can kind of say, oh yeah, I did realize that, that I never saw any trash on the ground because at Disney, apparently, you can get fired if you walk by trash and don't pick it up. Fish, this is the book that I'm uh, reading now. It's about the... Um, fish market in Seattle where they throw the fish and I think I said that right in the fact that they are uh, in Seattle. Uh, this particular title, it comes on audiobook, it's two hours so you could be able to plow through that no problem. Um, I've heard great things from people who work at the container store. They feel very well taken care of. One of our staff members, her son worked there and she's like, they really took such good care of them. You know, and, and he would do stuff in the back, and they'd bring him to the front. He truly felt like a team member. It wasn't just a job, but he enjoyed going there every day. Um, somebody who was a manager at Trader Joe's came to me once, and he said, I need this book. 
it's your ship. Uh, this particular gentleman, he writes several other uh, materials as well, kind of along the same thing. Uh, but this was the one that the gentleman at Trader Joe's uh, had to read for his job. And I said, oh, okay, I'll read that too. It's on my list. I just haven't gotten to it. But I wanted to let you guys know that it's aware and it's out there. Um, I couldn't find a particular book for Starbucks, but let me tell you, I used to work there. It's one of my favorite jobs. If I'm ever not at the library, you will find me working at Starbucks. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I thought the customer service was great. Um, if somebody's ever made your drink wrong, you're like, you know what, I'm so sorry, we'll remake it. And on occasion, they'll say something like, you know what, let me upgrade you to the next size for free. Or I'm so sorry we messed up your coffee. Here's your coffee, it's correct. And here's a little uh, coupon for free coffee at your next visit. We want you to come back. We want you to like what we have. Um, and at the same time, it also helps to be familiar with these resources because you can tell the kids, hey, you know, have you ever been here? Do you remember a scenario such as this? Okay, and that's me. We're done. Uh, a couple pictures. I actually thought I'd throw some decent pictures of my kid in here. Um, I normally only show people the funny ones because all pictures smile or all babies smile, all babies look cute. Wanted to throw some fun ones in there. Uh, this is uh, me with Letitia Smith from ALA. Uh, PLA was actually in Indianapolis in 2014 and somebody had went by, yes, hi Letitia! Somebody had went by um, uh, the ALA booth at PLA and said, oh, you work at the Hussey Mayfield Library. You need to send me your teen library, and I need to meet her. And she sent me home with all kinds of Yalsa swag. And I told her, I said, if I'm ever in Chicago, I'm going to stop by the office. And she said, yes, please do. So, uh, you know, a big shout out to Yalsa and ALA. They do great things. The people do great things. Uh, again, brevity is not my strong point. I, I went over. I'm so sorry if I'm keeping anybody from doing anything. Uh, but I, I do really feel strongly that you get out of something what you put into it and I just wanted to be able to use my experience to help you guys out. We really didn't get a lot of our out of our interns the first year that we had them uh, but we definitely did the past two years especially last year and we're just moving forward and doing great things for them and them for us as well. I'm here for questions. I'm holding everybody hostage until somebody asks something. Welcome to being a teen at a teen program. I see that one person is typing. Hopefully everybody is typing. Um, any tips about the training sessions and interns and volunteers? I, I'd say the big thing for most things is to reassure them. I mean, I, again, if you think back to your first job, you learn a lot, and it's scary. Um, and, and, and yes, I, I did have two different trainings. Um, so for the volunteers, they had a two-hour training. They had one training because we have two different floors. We split our kids up, so I take all the second floor teens. My colleague takes all the first floor teens. And I train mine and I say, well, this is how you look people up in the system to see if they're due a prize. This is how you show that they're awarded a prize. This is the prize they get. This is the number of drawing tickets that they get. We pull down all the prizes. We show the kids what they are. And one of the things that I tell them, I said, don't worry if you don't remember this. We have this binder. And I make sure that I have the binder ready. And I said it says quick reference guide for volunteers. We don't expect you guys to remember this, but we want you to feel comfortable doing it. And who here ever, ever likes to be able to go to their supervisor and say, yeah, I messed up or I forgot, I can't remember. I, I do it a lot. I lose things. I lost a camera once. It, it was our department camera. I lost it. I, I put it down somewhere. I couldn't find it for months, only except two days after I confessed to my boss that I thought I lost it, I found it. Um, something else, I lost a USB drive that was made specifically for a digital picture frame that we have that advertises um, our programs. And I confessed to her that I lost it, and the very next day I found it. This was after I had dreaded telling her that, that I lost it. And both of these happened within the past year. So we're, we're very comfortable with each other. Um, so in, in the first customer, or in the first training that we have that's two hours, we go over how to, how to award all those prizes, what the prizes are. And then we get everybody together for the customer service training, which is where we go over that PowerPoint presentation that I created um, about the Disney Institute. 
So that way the volunteers know what's expected of them. The interns, they go over the same thing, but then we do the tour. Um, we show them how to use the copier. I show them where all the prizes are kept in the back. One of the other things that I do with the interns, and I know that this is going to sound ridiculous, um, we have big heavy doors at the library. And I take them to the back um, office area, and I say, imagine that you're trying to work, because three people have offices, and the remaining five just have desks. So I say, imagine that you're trying to work. And I open the door, and I let it close naturally, so it clicks. And I do it again. And I do it again. And I do it again. And they say, yeah, that's really annoying. And then what I do is I do it like another five times. They're like, oh my gosh, you have to stop doing that. And I say, yeah. I said, one of the things you guys can do for our staff that's really important is to close the door quietly, turn the doorknob once the door shuts, then turn it so it doesn't click. So our interns, they would do all kinds of stuff and we never knew because we never heard them come in and out of our staff area at, at all. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we have those two training ses sessions is we want to go into more depth. Um, for that second one, we just had that uh, where we called the interns back the second day. Um, all kinds of little things like somebody accidentally was awarded a prize, somebody forgot their password to get online. Um, and so we make sure that the kids know how to do all those things. Uh, at the same time, there is information on that as far as how to um, go through and do all those items in their quick reference binder. I always tell them, you know, again, I, I'm, I'm never going to let you fail. I, I'm going to watch you tread water. I'm going to watch you, you know, struggle a little bit. But if you need help, I promise you, I will come in and I will see that you are comfortable and you, that you have everything you need. Um, do we have a grade level requirement for the interns? We have not. We have had interns uh, that were going into eighth grade before, but they showed us through the interview, through their past experiences, uh, through references that they provided, that they were absolutely capable of what we were asking of them. And we had no issue um, with that being um, a, a problem. Um, has anyone ever not completed the program? How did you handle that? Um, everybody that we had had completed the intern program. The closest we had was a couple years ago, we had a young lady who had gotten ill. She had mono. And she had called me. I'd sent all the interns home with um, a couple different sheets. One was everybody's name and phone number as far as the interns and myself. Um, another one that we used was a sheet that had everybody's availability. So every day, it had everybody who was available to work that day. So if you could not work, here were four interns that we know are in town that you can call and they can most likely help you out. Um, for this particular intern, I, I told her, I said, well, since you're sick, I said, I don't want to put any stress on you, but the way things work, remember, is that everybody gets $125 for completed their scheduled shift. If you work one less shift, that you will be subtracting $10 from your total, and we'll add that $10 total to the person who did cover your shift for you. And it, it turned out that kid, he was at the library. He must have worked something like 70 or 80 hours as opposed to working 60 because he was always there. He was always willing to come in. And, and that one young lady, she just she couldn't kick mono. It kind of hung around for, for a time. But in that particular um, instance, that's how we handled that. Um, but, but again, that's also why, why we require kids to have been in Teen Volunteer Corps, our volunteer program, for one year, because we know that they're kids who are interested. We know that they're reliable. We know that they can show up for their shifts. Whereas uh, we did have one kid who was, um, uh, she did apply for the internship. She interviewed. Um, and we ended up not having her as an intern. Uh, that was a year that I think we had 10 applications and we interviewed nine kids um, and we ended up not choosing that particular one one applicant and she only volunteered like four hours that summer which was odd because she's one of my team council members and she is known to be very reliable but that one summer uh, unfortunately that had kind of fell through by the wayside and we asked the kids you know if you are unable or not selected as an intern would you be able to be a, uh, a volunteer? Okay, so let me go over um, one last question that's here. Did you use online tracking software for SRP? Yes, we used Evance. 
Um, do the volunteers have separate logins or do they have a common one? Uh, the way Evans works is that only, I think at the staff level, can prizes be awarded. And maybe only at the staff level can you look up people's username and passwords and run reports. And we gave everybody, we gave the interns that password. Only the interns have it. We told them not to pass it out to anybody else. And it was a leap of faith for us. But again, we knew that we could trust these kids. And it, it worked well. Um, so we really have to stop. I'm so sorry. Again, brevity, not my strong points. But I, I really hope that you guys learned a lot today. Uh, let me go back one slide. Here's my information. Call me, email me. Um, I'm getting ready to sit in my office for the next 45 minutes. I'm more than happy to uh, get in touch with you. Um, if there's anything that anybody needs, I will make a note right now. Sorry, I had to grab paper to email Nicole the interview questions that we used. I will also go ahead and include the exit interview questions because you guys might find that helpful. And again, I don't know why the kids, why the interns didn't tell us, hey, Patricia, we're hungry. Because I'm like, if you're hungry, you need to eat. Don't pass out at the library because then we have to call 911 and your parents and it's a big mess. You have to eat at the library. Uh, yeah, I can definitely send out the list of management books as well. Um, did everybody get a handout of what the past intern grantees had done? Because I did send that to somebody and that was my understanding is how that was going to be used. Otherwise, I'm happy to send you guys everything I have. Okay, I will have to alter some of my things just so you know, Stephanie, uh, because it does have the names and phone numbers of minors. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I'm going to need a couple days on that because the rest of my week is packed. And I had a family emergency and was not here last week and then had to leave town early, so I'm desperately trying to get caught up and meet all of my summer reading deadlines. Okay, well, again, guys, call me, email me. I'm, I'm here to help. I feel so passionate about this program, which is why I went way over my time. But you guys, you're really awesome. And again, put a lot into it because you're going to get that out of it. And if anything, why not try it out? If it turns out that the kids mess it up, well, guess what? You had that on your plate to do anyway, but if you can maybe try to give them something to do and get it off your plate, it works that well. I also find that it's helpful to um, teach kids something by doing. Like, well, you know, let me tell you how to do it. We'll do a couple together, and then I'll watch you do it, and then I'll give you the thumbs up and go. And I always find that that's helpful as well. Well, happy Thursday, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend lined up. I hope everybody has super weather, and uh, good luck with your interns. And thank you again to Patricia for a wonderful webinar. We really appreciate it.